So John Michael, Johnny O'Keefe, he was born on the 19th of January 1935 in Sydney. He was the second of three children of Raymond Moran O'Keefe, he was a furniture salesman, and his wife Thelma Edna, near Kennedy, both born in New South Wales. Johnny attended Christian Brothers College, Waverley, and completed a first year certificate at the College of Retailing. His father occasionally played in a jazz band. While at school, Johnny sang in the choir and studied piano. He began to imitate the emotional singing style of the American pop idol, Johnny Ray, and appeared on radio to UW's Australian Amateur Hour. While working as a salesman in his father's furniture store, RM O'Keefe & Co. in Pitt Street, O'Keefe enrolled in economics at the University of Sydney. After he heard Bill Haley singing Rock Around the Clock in the film Blackboard Jungle in 1955, he decided to become a rock and roller. In September 1956, he and Dave Owens formed the DJs. D was for Dave, J was for Johnny. They were joined by Johnny Greenan, Lou Cash, Keith Williams and Johnny Catfish Persua. So the first turning point in O'Keefe's career was in early 1953 when he began singing with the quintet of jazz accordionist Gus Mersey at a charity dances. During these appearances, O'Keefe would sing his specialty, Johnny Ray's Cry, while wearing a pair of trick glasses that would squirt water over the audience. Radio personality Harry Griffiths, who met O'Keefe at this time, remembered him as a bad-tempered rat bag who often argued with Mersey, although Mersey commented that they never clashed over music. Recognising Johnny's potential, Mersey began tutoring him on piano, encouraging him to broaden his repertoire and helping him to refine his stagecraft. O'Keefe became the regular singer with the Mersey Quintet and performed with them every Sunday at the charity shows they performed at the Bondi Auditorium. The tenacious O'Keefe performed his routine no matter how small the audience sometimes braving the rotten eggs and fruit thrown at him by local louts. After his second stint of national service, he began singing with Mercy two nights a week, playing at university college dances, 21st birthdays and private parties. And Mercy also managed to get O'Keefe a regular spot on 2UW live radio show, Saturday Night Dancing. Up to this point, he had performed for free, simply to gain experience, but his first paid engagement as a singer was as a Johnny Ray impersonator, performing on the Bathurst radio station 2BS, for which he was paid £17 plus expenses. So by 1960 he had become the most popular and successful singer in Australia and a major TV star. Australian rock historian Ian McFarlane succinctly described O'Keefe's qualities in his article on the singer in the Encyclopedia of Australian Rock and Pop. Joe O'K was the first to admit he was a limited singer, but he possessed an incredible drive, a fierce ambition to succeed, a tireless facility for self-promotion, a tremendous flair for showmanship, and a larrikin spirit that was impressible. So O'Keefe's debut single, issued as a 78 RPM record, you hit the wrong note, Billy Goat, and The Chicken Song was released in July 1957, but it failed to chart and sold poorly, as did the follow-up, a cover of Pat Boone's Love Letters in the Sand, which O'Keefe later described as the worst record of his career. So by this time, O'Keefe had become close friend of the music concert promoter Lee Gordon, and their popularity really took off. When O'Keefe and the DJs were installed as a featured support act for Gordon's famous big show, concert bills at the Sydney Stadium. These big show concerts were landmarks in Australian popular entertainment, being among the first tours to feature leading overseas rock and roll stars, including Little Richard, Bo Diddley, Buddy Holly and Jerry Lee Lewis. Gordon also toured many top jazz acts of the day, including the first visits to Australia by black jazz artists such as Louis Armstrong. And in 1959, 
Lee Gordon contracted O'Keefe to perform and be filmed in his film Rock and Roll, a live filming of one of Lee Gordon's Rock and Roll Spectacular, shows that travelled nationally during that year. So O'Keefe issued three more singles during 1958, Over the Mountain, So Tough and That'll Be Alright. And they reached number 12 in Sydney and I Ain't Gonna Do It. Could this be magic? So in 1958, on the 2nd of August, O'Keefe married Mary Ann Renardi Wulzik, a 23-year-old hairdresser at the St. Therese Catholic Church, Dover Heights. They had three children, but their relationship eventually concluded due to the pressure of O'Keefe's career demands and they were divorced in 1966. So in the early hours of 27th of June 1960, O'Keefe, Grennan and Grennan's wife Janice were driving back to Sydney from the Queensland Gold Coast. About 20 kilometres north of Kempsey, the Plymouth plowed into a gravel truck, while the front of the large car bore the brunt of the very severe impact. All three were seriously injured. O'Keefe's face was smashed and Johnny Greenan was thrown out of the car, landing six metres away on the highway, causing a fractured vertebrae and loss of front teeth. Janice Greenan suffered a severe concussion. O'Keefe suffered multiple lacerations, a concussion and fractures to his head and face. He lost four teeth and his hands were also badly lacerated. So O'Keefe was airlifted back to Sydney for treatment. He continued recording and scored another number one hit in August 1960 with Don't You Know, Come On and Take My Hand and the next single, Ready For You, Save the Last Dance For Me, reached number four in November. However, many believe he never fully recovered from the accident and that it was the catalyst for his subsequent mental health problems. In January 1961, O'Keefe attempted another tour of the United States but it was also unsuccessful. By this time, he was reaching the limits of his physical and mental endurance. Given the severe head injuries he had sustained in the car crash, it is also possible that O'Keefe was suffering from an undiagnosed neurological trauma, which may have affected his personality and contributed to his later mental health and drug issues. And these possible problems were undoubtedly exacerbated by his heavy drug and alcohol use. After the second US tour collapsed, he flew to London on impulse, but he reportedly overdosed on a combination of alcohol, marijuana and prescription medication in his room at the Park Lane Hotel. He blacked out and woke three days later to find himself in a psychiatric hospital. He spent several days confined in a straitjacket and heavily medicated but by chance he encountered a staff member who had recently arrived from Australia who recognised him and was able to confirm his identity. As soon as he was released from close confinement, he escaped, but by chance he was able to make contact with Lee Gordon, who happened to be in London at the time, and with Gordon's help and that of, that of O'Keefe's wife and his parents, he was transferred to St George's Hospital to recover and he returned to Australia as soon as he was well enough to travel. Unfortunately, through this was to be many first of such breakdowns. O'Keefe was subsequently endured numerous spells in psychiatric hospital, including Hydebray Alcohol Rehab Hospital, and his drug problems dogged him until the end of his life. So his run of Australian hits continued in spite of his mounting personal problems. I'm Counting On You became his second number one hit in August 1961, followed by a third chart top R scene in March 1962, and I Thank You, which reached number 22 in December. But sing, sing, sing. I guess the only thing to keep me from a blow in my top is to sing, sing, sing. So Keith's tenor with Six O'Clock Rock ended in mid-1961 and in October he moved to ATN7 as compare for the Johnny O'Keefe show. The show was a major success but this only added to his already hectic workload and increased the pressure on him in August 1962. 
He suffered another breakdown and spent two months in the psychiatric ward at Royal Prince Alfred Hospital in Sydney. Beginning what was to become a repeating cycle of much publicised breakdowns, hospitalisation and recovery. During his convalescence, the TV show was renamed Sing, Sing, Sing and he was temporarily replaced as host by folk singer Lionel Long. So Johnny O'Keefe had 29 top 40 hits in Australia between 1958 and 1973. So in the career that spanned 20 years, he released over 50 singles, 50 EPs and 100 albums, and he was known as the Australian King of Rock and Roll. So some of the hits he was best known for was Do You Love Me? She Wears My Ring She Wears My Ring To Show The World That She uh, Move Baby Move And also the wild one. So one of the songs he was probably best remembered for was Shout. So on October 6, 1978, Johnny O'Keefe, Australia's first and most enduring rock star, collapsed at home and died at St Vincent's Hospital. He had suffered brain damage after his heart attack. His condition remained critical during the day and deteriorated late in the afternoon. His second wife, Maureen, and his parents were at his bedside. So Brian Henderson, who was host of Johnny O'Keefe on many bandstand programs, said John was a pioneer and also a very determined man. Had it not been for O'Keefe, it might have taken much longer for Australian talent to be recognised. He was a man of tremendous energy.